I'm out here bringing my chickens a nice, fresh, clean, cool water. Because, yeah, here in Southwest Ohio, it's been some of the most perfect weather possible. It's, it's low humidity, cool nights, but still really warm during the day. Extraordinarily warm. And clean, cool water is a necessity, but also what's a necessity is chicken maintenance even in the middle of, of you know, a low egg time. This time of year, there's not a whole lot of egg laying going on. We have a handful of chickens that are still laying eggs, but it's not the dozen a day that we were getting back in like May, <laughs> right? It's kind of a time where people kind of slack off taking care of their chickens. Uh, they're not, they're not, they don't need as much maintenance, sure. But they still need clean water. They still need clean waterers. But that's how you get clean water is make sure your waters are clean. And they still need good nutrition. Some of them aren't quite as accurate. I mean, you see there's a lot, whole lot of inactivity back here. You got some there. Put a new, need a fresh water. Need some fresh water, Munchkin? There you go. Even though you're old and hateful, don't lay eggs. Just need to make sure you got water, don't we? Make sure they get good food, huh, Layla? That's a good soaked feed today. Tootie's still talking to But it's time where people just kind of forget about their chickens in a way. Animal husbandry, you know, raising animals, the raising of animals themselves is, isn't just, you know, taking care of them when they, when they're benefiting you, right? You got to take care of them even in the down times to make sure that there are up times, right? So you got to make sure they have good times by, by taking care of them when they're not laying eggs or when we only have a handful of chickens laying eggs or when they're going to lay around and, and molt, lose feathers, right? You gotta take care of them, make sure they have proper hydration, proper nutrition, proper you know bedding, proper animal quarters themselves, right? Proper proper maintenance, even in the slow times. It's not all fun and games all the time with them either. Like you gotta wash waters, you right? know. It's not fun. This isn't a I don't get food from doing from washing the waters necessarily, but like you do kind of get food from washing the waters. It's you know the sun's lower here and that's so when it gets hot the sun is kind of hotter on the on the coop at the angle of its faces so it's really hard on them and the ones that are still laying need to keep laying and the ones that aren't laying and are going through some you know physical transition with their molt and whatever they still need proper care and like they need water and they know they will they'll drink more water a more appropriate amount of water out of a clean water than they will out of a dirty water. So you gotta make sure your waters are clean to encourage more drinking and more and more uh, and proper hydration for them. I mean, simply put, if I'm warm and sweaty and you give me some filthy water, I'm probably not gonna drink it, <laughs> right? So it's kind of the same thing with the chickens. They need more water, but in order to encourage more water, you need to make sure they have really good clean waterers so that your water is then clean. And all we've really done here is I've I got one of these plastic totes from Tractor Supply. I don't know. It's, it's enough to fill some, get some water and some and some um, and some dish soap in. And I just put the waters in it. Use use a good brush, scrub them off, make sure they're real clean, and make sure there's no bacteria growing on them, and rinse them off real good. And therefore, you just have nice clean water. We use we have two two or three waters that we can rotate them around. And that way they don't really get gunked up too bad, too quick. And it's really a very simple process. It's also extremely important to make sure that your chickens have good clean bedding. I mean, like this time of year, you're gonna have a lot of feathers in here. They're all molting, losing their feathers, regrowing feathers. But it's still super important to make sure that, you know, you try to keep it somewhat clean. Like honestly, well, I'm not gonna do a full clean today. I'm not cleaning everything out, taking everything out of this run, everything else. I'm just going to try and make sure they've got some good bedding in there and that because it's going to get thinned out it's going to get it's going to get scraped out it's going to get full of feathers so you can look like they scraped a lot of feet out and over the course of time they've you know obviously they've manured in it there's feathers all over the place it's it's not stinky in here by no means but it just needs to be freshened up isn't that right Layla yeah those are things you just gotta simply do sometimes it's not a big massive ordeal you know we don't have to make it a big production we ain't got to clean everything out of the run and then clean everything out of the coop and then put everything we ain't got to do it all like that now if you want to by all means do it there's this the stuff here in this run is it's good and broke down I and mean, this is this is really good here 
for me to take out and cut and start composting it. But it's also thinned out a lot. I can just take this stuff back here, pull back this way, and pile it up here and get it when I need it. Now at that point, they can they can continue to manure in it, scratch it up, break it down, you know, and continue to to make it good for mulching and composting it. But for now, we're just going to take some of that out and then put in a few bags of pine shavings. A normal full clean, I might put in five or six. We're just going to do three. It's a really dusty job as well, so you got to give yourself plenty of breaks and so you don't breathe in too much dust. But you can see clearing this mess. Pull them back from here, and we'll bring it back this way, all right? And this stuff right here is kind of gently used, honestly. It's not very, it's not too bad. Uh, it's been packed in in the back, but they kind of scratch it back there and they pack it in real good. So I'm just bringing it forward, using it out here, and I'm gonna put fresh, I'm gonna be, be putting fresh shavings back here underneath the roost and in the corner where they manure at more often, and they tend to take a, a, dust, a dust bath more often as well. All right, now we're finished, really simple. Not too hard, a nice quick clean, but it's going to make a heck of a lot of difference. Look at that. So much better. The dust is still settling from scraping everything around. Now, after we put our three bags of pine shavings down, we do use the, the flake pine shavings from Tractor Supply. Okay, there's flake and there's fine. We use the flake. However, these bags of flake look a little closer to fine. Well, that's okay. They're still clean. They're good. We put some diatomaceous earth in here as well. Mix that in. It's really good to keep parasites off their skin. While when you have a solid floor, you shouldn't have a whole lot of, of parasites coming in. Sometimes the shavings from Tractor Supply or from any uh, place you buy your bedding from, if they're stored outside, birds can kind of get on them and the bird mites are entire are so small there's bird mites and red mites okay red mites are more harmful than bird mites to be honest with you but bird mites can come in off of the birds and get inside any pinholes that's on the plastic of the bags of shavings so you can get bird mites from your bedding that you buy if the if they're being stored outside so using diatomaceous earth inside the bedding will help eliminate that issue okay and kind of prevent that issue from 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 ever arising and so we got a good thick layer back there and we got a good thick layer here it's important to have a really thick layer of shavings okay for multiple reasons but once you may not think of it's better on their feet okay obviously it's going to absorb more absorb more manure and just be a better surface for them but it's better on their feet their feet are vitally important to them uh, they're going to jump off the roost, jump out of the nesting boxes, jump off of wherever in here. Heck, even out that loft sometimes. And they're going to hit this grant, hit this flooring, and they need something under their feet to cushion the cushion the blow from the bottom of their feet. Okay, so it's really important to make sure that they have a good landing surface. Watch out, big owl! Watch out, stay in there. So it's really important to make sure they have a really good surface to land on that's not hard on their feet okay so again that's taking care of them this maintenance is very important even even when they're least active even when they're not laying a bunch of eggs even in the fall and the winter it's important to maintain your chickens and their coop their health vitally important to keep them healthy when they're not laying so they can be really healthy when they are laying all right so thank you guys so much for watching I do appreciate it. my name is jason this is art of creation homestead we love y'all god bless you and goodbye